Jurors in the trial of late-term abortion Dr. Kermit Gosnell have made their decision. Good evening. I'm Mark Martin. And I'm Wendy Griffith. Gosnell has been found guilty on three counts of first-degree murder in the killings of babies born alive. He will now face the possibility of the death penalty in all three cases. The 72-year-old was also found guilty of involuntary manslaughter in the overdose death of an adult patient. The jury did acquit him in the death of a fourth baby. Today's verdict comes after the jury deadlocked this morning on two counts. They were considering more than 250. The trial of Gosnell has shed new light on the abortion industry. Pro-choice groups call Gosnell's practice, which went unchecked for years, appalling and an outlier in the industry. But some lawmakers on Capitol Hill aren't buying that. They say the Gosnell case has shown how abortion clinics in other states need stricter regulations and oversight. What we are finding now through looking at the information from 15 of the states is that maybe it's not an outlier. And when you're talking about the health, the safety, and the life of women and children, it is imperative that we hold the states accountable. The Energy and Commerce Committee has sent a letter to all 50 states. They want information to examine how states monitor abortion clinics. For more on this, we're joined now by John Jessup in Washington. He's been following the Gosnell trial closely. John, now that the verdict has come down, what happens next? Well, the next phase of this trial is the sentencing phase. And as we have reported, since Dr. Kermit Gosnell has been found guilty of at least three of those deaths in the babies uh, uh, in the abortion clinic, uh, that means that he could potentially face the death penalty. So the jury will have to come back next week on the 21st, next Tuesday, to decide uh, whether or not they will look at death as a possibility for his sentence or uh, life in prison. And if it's life in prison, it's life for all three of those counts uh, uh, against those babies. Now, the jury was deadlocked this morning. Do we know the two charges that stumped them? You know, we don't, and we probably won't know until the end of the trial uh, completely. Uh, my guess, I think it's safe to assume that since early on in the trial, the questions were primarily about his co-defendant, Eileen O'Neill, who was a medical student uh, that the prosecution says was masquerading as a doctor practicing at his clinic. Uh, those first initial questions from the jury had to do with O'Neill. Later on in, in, in their deliberation, they started asking more questions about Dr. Gosnell. So I think it's safe to assume that those questions that they had, those counts that were deadlocked earlier on this morning, uh, had to do with Kermit Gosnell. And, and clearly, they were able to uh, come to some sort of conclusion. And quickly, the trial did spark backlash against the mainstream media, and rightly so for not covering it. But it also seemed to give pro-life groups more momentum. How so? You know, you're right. Uh, the the pro-life groups and a lot of conservatives on Capitol Hill were all decrying the fact that this case was not being covered in the media. And, and really, it, it drove a conversation and it got people more interested about this case as to why the media wasn't covering it. And it really started this debate, this dialogue about uh, abortion. Uh, and, and as many people suspect, uh, it not only uncovered what happened at Gosnell's clinic for three decades, uh, many people are pointing in the pro-life industry as to this potentially happening in other clinics around the country, as we just stated uh, earlier with that, uh, that congressional report. All right, John Jessup, thanks for staying on top of it.